Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be dealing with trigonometric expressions. So we're given a times cosine theta minus b times sine theta is equal to c. a, b, c are given numbers. And we're supposed to evaluate a sine theta plus b cosine theta. And the answer is going to be in terms of a, b, and c. So we're going to find kind of like a parametric solution, which means that you can change the values of ABC, and every time you do, you're going to get a different problem. So we could actually replace ABC with some numbers and make it specific, like 3 cosine theta minus 4 sine theta is equal to, I don't know, some other number, and then find the second expression. But this is more general, and it's kind of nice that we can do it in the general form. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Since I'm trying to evaluate a sine theta plus b cosine theta, let's go ahead and set it equal to something. So replace the question mark with some constant because I expect to get a constant from here, right? Let's call it k. So now I have the following. I have a cosine theta, right, minus b sine theta is equal to c, and I'm supposed to find a sine theta plus b cosine theta in terms of a, b, c. And we called it k. So we're going to be solving for k. Let's see if we can find it. We'll talk about some other stuff in addition to this. But notice that from the first equation to the second, sine and cosine switched around and the minus sign turned into a plus sign. Let's see how this plays out. We could also ask the same question with both plus signs or both minus signs. The answers uh, or resu result would be slightly different. Anyways, a lot of variations on this. I don't want to talk too much. Let's get to work. So here's what I'm going to do. Since we have the sine and cosine with sine kind of different coefficients, it would make sense if we did something. So here is a general idea. Anytime you see sine theta plus cosine theta or some other linear combination of these two things, square both sides. It's a general strategy that works most of the time. Even though we have some coefficients, it's going to work because notice that the coefficient of cosine theta is a here and it's b here. So let's see how that plays out. So we're going to use that general strategy of squaring both sides for both of these equations. Let me square the first one, both sides, and then we're going to do the second one. The first one is going to give us a squared cosine squared theta plus b squared sine squared theta minus, be careful about the minus sign, 2ab cosine theta sine theta equals c squared. And then we're going to do the second one, same way. And now this is going to give us a squared sine squared theta plus b squared cosine squared theta. Notice that the coefficients are aligned nicely. And then plus 2ab sine theta cosine theta equals k squared. And then guess what we're going to do? We're going to take advantage of the Pythagorean identity. If you ask me what is one of the most important formulas or identities in math, I would say a squared plus b squared equals c squared or the Pythagorean theorem. In the trigonometric version, it turns into sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. That is the most important or one of the most important identities. Okay, so that's what we're going to use here. And to get that, we're going to add these two equations. That's why I kept saying these coefficients are nicely aligned. Now, we're going to add a squared something and a squared something. So we can basically factor out a squared and write this as cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. And notice that the b squared also nicely adds up. b squared times the quantity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. What happens to the two ab's? They're opposites, so what can they do, right? They have to cancel out. And we end up with c squared plus k squared. Remember that we are supposed to solve for k, right? c is known or a given number. Now, one of the things that's super important is after you do this, immediately replace this with 1 and do it twice because that's what's really powerful about this method. Now we get the following. a squared times 1 is a squared plus b squared times 1 is b squared and that's equal to c squared 
plus k squared. That's kind of like sum of two squares equals sum of two squares, but the idea, don't lose sight, is solving for k. So let's go ahead and isolate k from here. I'm going to leave it here and write this as, in other words, subtract c squared. You'll get a squared plus b squared minus c squared. We're almost there. What we need to do next is to square root both sides. But this is going to give us two solutions, right? So that's what we're going to discuss next. So because depending on a, b, c values, we might be getting non-real solutions. For example, what happens if a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared, right? Then something interesting happens. Then this is going to be a negative quantity. k squared is going to have to be negative. But that doesn't happen with the real numbers. It only happens in the complex world. So then we kind of need to think about complex numbers. So if that's the case, how do you write uh, k? You can kind of write it as negative k times i squared. And that's equal to k squared i squared, which is going to give you negative k squared, so on and so forth. So you can kind of work with the negation, but I just wanted to briefly mention this because that's what happens. So to for the real numbers, we're going to assume that a squared plus b squared must be greater than or equal to c squared. Now, what happens if k is equal to 0? Let's consider that. That means a sine theta is equal to b cosine theta. And then from there, uh, you know, we can kind of find tangent theta numerically, so on and so forth. Anyways, let's go ahead and solve for k from here. If k squared is positive or non-negative, k is going to be plus minus the square root of a squared plus b squared minus c squared. Now, can k be negative or positive? Of course, it all depends on the values of a, b, and c, right? So one of the things that would be interesting to look at is if you have anything like a cosine theta plus minus, of course, in this case, b sine theta in general, we can talk about the maximum and the minimum values of these expressions. So the maximum value that this can attain is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared, which comes from Pythagorean theorem again. And the minimum value is going to be the opposite of that value. So when you set this equal to a c or a k, you also have to make sure that your answer is not greater than the maximum and not less than the minimum. Because if you go outside those, outside those boundaries, then you're again entering the complex world. So you have to treat it differently. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.